Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Good, good. This is actually a very, very difficult talk for me because the first time ever my sister-in-law is here and she's never heard me speak before. She's still getting over the fact that her sister married me, so there's just the bar is really high right now. Um, I'm going to share this, our story. It's a 106-year-old story about Northwestern Mutual and how we've disrupted the customer experience for you today. But before I start, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. Um, as Carlos said, I was uh, any Rutgers alums? Woo, Rutgers! Yeah. The football team was horrible for the four years I was there. As soon as I left, they're amazing. But anyway, I was a computer science, computer engineering, double major out of Rutgers. I was at Goldman Sachs for 13 years, survived with only a few white hair. I met Carlos from product school. One beer turned into 17. Went through the product school curriculum for years and ended up here. Just kidding, <laughs> Carlos always pays me to say that story. Um, really what happened is I was at Goldman Sachs and I got tired of big companies, bounced around some startups, had my own startup, and I swore to myself I'm never going back to a big company again. So I joined LearnVest. Has anyone heard of LearnVest? <laughs> Woo, LearnVest, FinTech, geared at fixing America's wallet, especially for millennials, through digital. Two months into the job, Northwestern Mutual acquired us. So, today I run the digital team across Milwaukee and uh, New York at Northwestern Mutual. A little bit about Northwestern Mutual. Fun fact, it's called Northwestern Mutual because in 1857, when the company was formed, it was actually the most Northwestern state. There was no other state to the north or the west of Wisconsin. And, you know, it survived <laughs> This is not, I'm not making this up, this is true. Uh, there was two civil wars that had happened, a Great Depression, a recession. After all of that, after 162 years, last year we paid 5.6 billion in dividends to our customers, okay? And the consumer experience is everything that you would imagine in a great digital experience. Word of mouth, meeting people at coffee shops. We have 8,000 amazing financial advisors that meet people like me and you at Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and sell on paper life insurance and financial planning policies. And that business model has worked tremendously for 162 years. Funny story, when I first joined about a few months in, I had the privilege of going to an client's ranch in Texas. Okay, uh, first time I've ever been to a ranch. Has anyone been to a ranch? Okay, I got to see a rodeo. I got to wear a cowboy hat. Um, and everything was happening on paper. We signed the deal, we had a big feast, and the advisors had told me, try to convince these clients to start using digital. I'm like, great, I'm a month in the job, and I'm at a ranch in Texas. Um, and what happened during that experience is the client came over to me and said, listen, it was great meeting you. We built a great relationship. Give me a call anytime. And I said, sure, give me your number, we'll text. He's like, buddy, we don't text, we call, right? And that's how we have that relationship. And that's the model that's worked for so many years. Along came us. We got together with LearnVest, right? And the question is, why change? For 160 years, two years, this business model's worked. Why wouldn't it continue to work? Well, think of yourself and take your corporate hat off for a minute from your company. Think about how many times you use your mobile app, right? Uber, seamless. For God's sakes, there's dog walking apps in New York now, right? We are wired as consumers that we need it now. We need it in our hands, in our mobile experience. Who's, I, it's, we're in New York, but who's been to Newark Airport or flown out of it recently? Okay, I have a funny story for you. About six months ago, I was presenting in San Francisco. I got on an Uber. I got to my, at Newark Airport, <laughs> and uh, I got out of the Uber, and I checked and I forgot my wallet, right? And I called my wife and I said, I'm gonna miss my flight, I forgot my wallet. And she said, just come back home. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna use my charm, Lena, and try to get through TSA. She said, good luck with that. And I got through TSA, they did some stuff, they asked me a bunch of questions on a mobile app, I got through TSA, ran to the United Gate, missed my flight. Rechecked to a new flight on my United app. My team's here, they know I can't survive without coffee. Ordered coffee on Apple Pay, got on the flight, checked into the Marriott in San Francisco on my mobile app and did the whole thing back, right? I spent three days without my driver's license and my wallet and I survived. I told my 10 year old son the story and he said, dad, imagine you forgot your phone. 
I told my dad the story and he said, son, you have to print out your license and put it in each one of your suit jackets, right? <laughs> that is the world we live in at Northwestern Mutual. We have to change, we have to adopt, but we have to remember our core values of building that relationship. This was our client experience three years ago. Yes, this was our client experience three years ago. Um, no mobile apps, no pre-customer experience. You had to basically sit with your advisor. It looks like a piece of paper on a screen. Of our four million plus clients, about 3% used any form of this digital experience. This is our digital experience now. This is the prospect experience. This is the public experience that if you went to NorthwesternMutual.com today, I don't do it now because you should be listening to me, but later on, if you go to NorthwesternMutual.com, you can see this beautiful experience, right? And we measure success based off bounce rate. Ever go to a website and just X out, right? That's what people used to do to our public experience. In fact, three out of four visitors used to just hit X. Now, three out of four visitors stay and they click on something, they do something, they take an action, they read content, they read personalized content, they connect with an advisor, they know what we're doing, and by the way, they can do it on their mobile device as well. This is our client experience. Four million clients, we're hovering around about two million now, are using and linking their external accounts. What we did when we brought LearnVest and Northwestern Mutual together is we really brought the culture of the small startup and the core values of the big company and we blended it together. You have the ability in this experience to link your external assets. You can link your mortgage, you can link your credit card. Together we're gonna paint your NM and your non-NM spending habits. You can set goals with your advisor, you can track your goals real time. And by the way, you can also do the servicing components. You can pay your bills, you can change your beneficiaries. And by the way, we also have a mobile app, right? On iOS and Android. So a lot has changed since those three years ago when we joined. So you're probably wondering to yourself, wow, great story, but how did you actually do it? Well, first we needed to disrupt the way that we work, okay? This is the number one thing that I tell everybody, that whether you're at a startup or a big company or somewhere in between like I am, you need to change the way that you work. What we instrumented is called pizza pie teams. Nothing to do with pizza although that is the preferred food of most of those teams. Um, you know, pizza pie teams are small teams of about eight to 10 folks that are really focused on building great experiences. Um, you know, you've, you've probably heard of pod teams and other models, and the trick here is we didn't just take another company's model and make it ours, we had to transfer it and make it something that works for us. So what's unique about our pod teams is there's a product manager, and of equal weight, there's a dev lead, right? The product manager is focused on all the things that you would think of, working with design, user experience, research, wireframing, prototyping, et cetera. The engineer is focused on architecture, code reviews, et cetera. That's really helped kind of bring those bridges and have those clear roles and responsibilities. We have designers in the mix, we have advisors in the mix. It's funny to see people in suits in these stand-up meetings, but we have various folks that are coming together in these pod teams. One rule of thumb, every two weeks, you have to release something. You have to put out a feature, right? If, if you're gonna fail, fail fast and put something out. Other thing I'd say is these pod teams are across New York and Milwaukee. It's funny when I walk into the New York office, I'll see seven people on the team standing and then there's a screen and there's three people in Milwaukee standing, right? So I don't wanna hear the excuse of how do you work between regions, we figured it out. We've brought the best of Milwaukee and New York together to create these pod teams. Second is we started obsessing about our users. We're actually lucky, we have two sets of users. We have the clients that are using our products and we have those 8,000 amazing advisors that are out there and no, we were making decisions and no one was actually talking to the business or talking to our clients and understanding some of their pain points. So we started obsessing and building programs around that, which I'll talk about in a bit. The third and most important to me personally is we reorged our team. We don't have a mobile team. We don't have a web team. We don't have a digital team. We actually have a team that a customer would understand. We have an activation team that's at the top of the funnel that's bringing people into our experience. We have an engagement team that's shepherding people along to the next step. Then we have the client team that's actually servicing our paying clients, and then we have a servicing team, right? So really starting to think about the team and the organization in a customer journey's perspective. Second, we had to disrupt that we, the way that we engage with our clients. 
You know, I, we have 4.x million clients today, and the first thing I realized is we're not talking to them. We're not getting their feedback. What we started doing is we created a program called the Inner Circle. Of those 4 million, we picked 4,000. It's hovering around 400,000 now. And yeah, we're sending surveys and we're getting feedback, a lot of the stuff that you're probably doing as well. But what we realized is we gotta go deeper. What we really need to do is have shadow sessions. We need to actually watch them, watch where they stumble in the experience, watch when they get off the experience, watch when they come back onto the experience. How are they using the product, right? Um, and that was where we started doing certain things like this, what we call creative labs. Creative labs are literally getting together with advisors and clients and sitting and working together to solve the problems. Not presentations, drawing sticky notes, watching them, seeing where they stumble in the experience. One note I'll make about, my, about data here. My marriage with data is like my marriage with my wife. She's right, I'm wrong, most cases. But you know, data can be very misleading. <laughs> uh, my dad, uh, we're very close to my parents. We actually go over every week. Me, I have two young kids, seven and 10. And we started going over every week, and every week it was fun, but then it got boring because we didn't have anything really to talk about. We just saw you last week, right? And it's starting getting to a point where, you know, how can we juice up these meetings that we're having with our family, right? And my dad's like, I'm going to get an iPhone. And we're like, oh, God. And my brother and I like, this is going to be a disaster. He got a smartphone, so he started texting with my son. He started FaceTiming with my daughter. He started getting a Facebook account and posting embarrassing pictures of me when I was younger. He even sent me a Snapchat request, which I'm not even on, right? So, but what I learned from that experience is all the data said that my dad would never do that. But what he decided to do because it enhanced his relationship with his kids, and now when we meet, we talk about all the things that happen during the week and all the engagements they have, and half the time I don't even know what they're talking about. This is what we started realizing as we started looking into data. We assumed that our younger clients and advisors are gonna gravitate to mobile. But in my dad's use case, actually our biggest users are from 50 to 60 that are using mobile because they want to engage with their young clients, right? So a lot of learnings come out of these sessions and it's just a different way that we started engaging with our cl clients. Advisors, right? Listen, this is what you would imagine. 8,000 advisors, they're wearing suits, they're coming to you and selling you life insurance and investment planning and financial planning. What we decided to do is we decided to tell them to take their suits off, right? Let's push the chairs out. Let's have creative labs and sessions and really understand how are you working. In the end of the day, if someone doesn't like our client experience, they're not going to call me. They're not going to call my team. They're going to call their advisor, right? And their advisor needs to be in the know on how it works. How are they engaging with their clients? So we spend a lot of time, and we don't forget that we're a B2B to C business, and we spend a lot of time with our advisors understanding how they work from shadow sessions, creative labs, and even going in and watching them in their sales cycle and the art of what they do when they're meeting with clients. What, what did we learn out of this? A few quick examples. We learned that all generations matter, right? Um, you know, I get so much from established clients. I don't care about my budgets. I just want to know the high level number. Great, you have that option. Then from our younger professional clients, we said, I actually want to know about my budgets. I want to know where my money's going. Great, you have that as well. We were able to find a balance where we built an experience that's customizable and relatable to both. We built a matching algorithm. This sounds funny, but it's like, imagine the match.com for the life insurance industry. Um, what we realized is most of our competitors just have 8,000 lists of advisors. How can we be a little bit more innovative? What we've done is we've built the ability, now you add five bits of information, my name, my age, my location, my income, my goals, and you'll get matched with three advisors that are like to like to you, right? You'll see their picture, you'll see their story, and what we realize is this is gonna be the savior for us. We're gonna get so many more digital leads. We got some, but what we realized is some people don't care. They just want to be connected to an advisor, and they want you to match for them. So what we said is, you have the option to do either. And we've built this experience that actually caters for all different types of our clients. Finally, um, this is one of my favorites, and you know, Abigail is going to be presenting next. Uh, we used to work together at Northwestern Mutual when she was there, and you know, she was one of the best design partners I've ever had in my life, but we both got beat up, and I remember we were in a boardroom with a bunch of advisors that we decided to change a pie chart to a bar chart because who wouldn't want a bar chart? It's cooler, right? And it works on mobile, and it looks great, but what we didn't realize is 
the 8,000 advisors have built that into their story. They actually tell their story to prospects and clients is slice of your pie, piece of your pie. Nothing to do with the pizza pie teams, just a different analogy. And then what we realized is after getting beat up, Abigail and I sat in that room and said, we're going to give you the option to do both. You can toggle between a bar chart and a pie chart. One year later, I was just telling Abigail in the green room, it's still 50-50. Right? So this is another example of kind of empowering the client and giving them control of what they can uh, see and view. Lastly, we disrupted the way that we lead. Right? Um, Vlad stole my uh, Blockbuster example, but I'm going to date myself. There's actually one Blockbuster left in Bend, Oregon, by the way. But you know, my approach is the subtle scare. We looked at our competitors. And by the way, every company has two types of competitors. There's your disruptors, and then there's in your incumbents. right? And we spend a lot of time with leadership saying, we need to change. If we don't, we're going to be irrelevant. We don't want to be blockbuster, right? We don't want to be that. So we looked at our disruptors, and we really came to realize that nobody's actually doing everything that we're doing. They're doing its and bits of it. We looked at our competitors and our incomp uh, incumbents. They were doing its and bits. So it was really about kind of giving that subtle scare and that nudge to get people along. I remember my first board meeting. This was really exciting because I told the team I have 30 minutes. And of course, they were very nervous that someone was giving me 30 minutes in a board meeting. And what I said is, we're not going to sit. And they said, what? Please don't mess up the agenda. Um, and what we did is we pushed all the chairs out. We put up our notes. We put up our wires. And we presented to the board. And we didn't have any bullet points, right? We showed them. We showed them an example of how the experience and the consumer uh, experience could look, right? That's how we got our funding. We started small. We got funding for one pod team. That one pod team was really focused on kind of account aggregation, really bringing in the external accounts. Before you know it, we had three pod teams. We had mobile app pod teams being developed as well. Oh no, we're at 10 pod teams. We're now at the customer activation front. And here comes more pod teams. We have 30 pod teams today across New York, Milwaukee that are building amazing experiences day in and day out. And it all started from that boardroom. And it all started from showing, not telling. Guys, the results, we had 87 releases three years ago. Last year, we had 4,002. The team's been amazing to be able to get us this far. And you know, I just think that this is a classic story of a big company and a startup culture coming together. I've actually written a piece about this that I can share to anyone at happy hour. But you know, it's the real secret sauce is taking the best of both cultures and creating that third culture. And the team's done it, and we've reaped the rewards of it. Um, my final note here is, right, I, uh, I also got a call from this one of our top, it was actually our number one advisor in San Francisco about uh, two years ago. He has a client, 40 years has been with the company, he's been their client, and he was starting to transition his money management to his young daughter who works in Silicon Valley in uh, San Francisco, right? And he said, I need your help. The daughter hates the digital experience, she wants to move all the money, We've been with you for 40 years, like call the tech guys, right? And then we came in and we spent a lot of time with the daughter and explained the digital experience. I'm fortunate enough to stay that they're still clients with us. And every year I get a handwritten beautiful holiday card from the dad saying, thank you so much. I really appreciate how you built the relationship and really spent the time, not even one minute talking about the digital experience, and I consider you a friend, right? And I respond back to the daughter and the dad on email, and I said, thank you for the beautiful note. The daughter responds to me every time and says, thank you for the digital experience. I'm so embarrassed that my dad sent you a letter. <laughs> so again, build amazing stuff, right? And thank you for the time. And I think the secret sauce for disrupting and building a great customer experience is not taking away from the core values that you and your company have, but taking digital and bringing them together. Thank you very much.